This is Emotional Intelligence, a guide to understanding, developing, and improving your emotional intelligence, why it is more important than IQ, and how to use it in your life spectrum, from everyday life to business and leadership. Written by Adam Brown. Read by Matt Montanez. Introduction. I want to thank you and congratulate you for downloading the book, Emotional Intelligence, a guide to understanding, developing, and improving your emotional intelligence, why it is more important than IQ, and how to use it in your life spectrum, from everyday life to business and leadership. This book will be your guide to understanding the fundamentals of emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is the phrase used to describe the ability to identify, use, understand, and manage emotions in positive ways to relieve stress, communicate effectively, empathize with others, overcome challenges, and diffuse conflict. Stress, depression, and anxiety are just a few of the negative emotions you may experience over the course of a day or week. Becoming more emotionally intelligent requires an ability to manage your negative emotions. This book is the key to managing your feelings. Thanks again for downloading this book. I hope you enjoy it. Chapter 1. Can you improve your emotional intelligence? A person's emotional capital is crucial to his or her success. The relationship between success and emotional intelligence has indicated that star performers, people who outperform their peers, score significantly higher on emotional self-awareness, self-actualization, empathy, interpersonal relationships, flexibility, problem solving, and stress management. Emotional intelligence has been called a soft skill, but research shows that it delivers bottom line business results. Research has confirmed that emotional intelligence leaders are indeed more successful than their less emotional intelligent peers. Self-awareness lies at the core of emotional intelligence, and no truly effective leader operates without self-awareness. This concept was highlighted by the Harvard Business Review in an article entitled Breakthrough Ideas for Tomorrow's Business Agenda. The article stated executives who fail to develop self-awareness risk falling into an emotionally deadening routine that threatens their true selves. Indeed, a reluctance to explore your inner landscape not only weakens your own motivation, but can also corrode your ability to inspire others. Emotional capitalists, the new leaders, refers to today's top executives as emotional capitalists. Emotional capitalists are those extraordinary leaders who recognize that to build successful business today, they must go beyond the focus on traditional financial assets, such as physical capital, buildings, and hardware, and even beyond the intellectual capital, which comprises of intellectual property databases, formulas, and business processes to a new focus on emotional capitals, which is the energy, enthusiasm, and commitment in the hearts of everyone connected with the business. According to emotional capital in business comprises two core elements they are external emotional capital, and internal emotional capital. Adds a third element that is critical to the role of leadership. That element is intrapersonal emotional capital. The first element, external emotional capital, is the value of the feelings and perceptions held by the client as well as the external stakeholder towards your business. It can be argued that the only way to create successful service provision is to attract the emotional client rather than the rational client. This is achieved by appealing to the feelings and imaginations of the client. Clients want to buy from organizations that values diversity, organizations that they like, and organization that represent people like them. This creates brand value and goodwill. This results in repeat service, use, and sales through customer loyalty, lifelong relationships, and referrals. The internal emotional capital is the second core element of emotional capital, and it relates to the value of emotional commitments held in the hearts of the people within your business. It can be described as the feelings, beliefs, and values held by everyone within the business. It is vital that the leadership within a business pays attention to not only the external customer relationship, but also to the internal customer relationship. The people within the organization are equal 
equally vital to the success of the business. Every relationship that your business has with everyone it touches is an asset and an investment. To build emotional wealth, you must treat your people as investors because they are intellectual and emotional investors. Everyone must be living the dream of the organization for the organization to be great. Chapter 2. The Steps on How to Develop Your Emotional Intelligence, EI. The term emotional intelligence, shortened as EI, has something to do with the skill, the capability, or aptitude to single out, evaluate, and deal with one's emotions and the emotions of other people. Contrasting propositions as to how emotional intelligence should be defined and used in the different fields of interest are still on the spotlight. Nevertheless, regardless of the deferring definition and usage of the notion of emotional intelligence in certain subject matters of which is deemed purely technical, still, the term's etymology can be drawn from one of the works of Charles Darwin, particularly on the relevance of emotional expression for subsistence or survival and second adaption. I'll bet conventional denotations of the word intelligence gave emphasis to the cognitive domains during the 1900s. A number of prominent scholars in the study of the field of intelligence had started to acknowledge the significance of the non-cognitive domains. As an example, the term social intelligence, which describes the capacity of comprehending and managing other people, was used as as early as 1920. The term emotional intelligence had been first used to attribute to the doctoral thesis of Wayne Payne, which is entitled A Study of Emotion, Developing Emotional Intelligence. But before this scholarly piece, the term emotional intelligence had emerged in lunar. In some researches, EI and job performance has a positive correlation. A compensatory paradigm between IQ and EI offered by Co and Miners posits that the correlation between emotional intelligence and job performance becomes quite positive as cognitive intelligence decreases. In 2004, this idea was first proposed by P. Trides, ETAI. In the context of academic performance, the aftermath of the previous research corroborated the compensatory paradigm, which suggests that employees with low intelligence quotient get higher task performance and organizational citizenship attitude directed at the organization per se, the higher their emotional intelligence. So much with defining the concept of emotional intelligence, let us deal now with how to improve an individual's emotional intelligence. It is conspicuously empirical. The individuals having high EI have higher and better chances of attaining success in all the aspects of life. Before you begin to take emotional intelligence tests, consider some of the principles that are in a way helpful to ameliorate the EI of a person. It is expected that after perusing this article, all the ideas embedded herein will be incorporated to the readers as their own. 1. Deference. This word is not merely a string of linguistic symbols associated with sounds and conveys a meaning. It is more on how it is being delineated in dictionaries and encyclopedia. It is not something one can acquire from drastic means, but is achievable through the course of time. Unless people will not manifest it to others, this remains an empty concept. Respect is one strong foundation of developing one's EI. If you want others to respect you, you have to learn first how to respect their feelings or emotions. In doing so, mutual deference is then built up. The golden rule emphasizes that do unto others what you want others do unto you. When your office mate is in big trouble, regardless of whatever problem that may be, you should show empathy and compassion and try to find feasible solutions that can alleviate his or her problem. If your friend has a different belief because of his religious affiliation, then try not to get into a religious talk that might offend him or her. Remaining silent sometimes is the best way to show respect. 2. Employing the technique of reverse psychology. Of course, it is inevitable that there are times when things go tough or rude on you and luck is not on your side. Just repose if you are angry and not in a good mood. Try to be composed amidst a trying or 
difficult situation. Although it is easier said than done, but try to paint a genuine smile to your face every time you encounter a problem. Never go worry. Always remember that having problems is just like sitting a rocking chair. Although it moves you, but it does not take you anywhere. And worrying will not definitely add up a day to your life, but it will only do the otherwise. So why worry if it will only worsen your problem? Three, listening. The wars in history could have been avoided if only all the leaders of the nations had learned to listen to each other's different views and then try to come up with plans that might erase those differences. Learn to listen and listen to learn. Most successful people are not loquacious type of individuals, but rather they are the kind of folks who love to listen to other people's brilliant ideas and learn from them. Listening is one of the factors contributing to their sustainable success. It can be said that when you constantly Constantly listen and learn to apply the good ideas that you have listened to or have given an ear to, then you will become very much successful in everything you do. The steps on how to improve your emotional intelligence, which is mentioned above, can be easily understood, but building recognition on these ideas is just the first major step in doing the toughest part of improving your EI. The toughest part is living it, which entirely depends on you. Ways to improve your emotional intelligence. It is generally agreed that in order to improve your emotional intelligence, you must stay motivated and control your emotions. So how do you do it? Below are some of the suggestions. Reduce your stress by working out. It has been proven to be effective that in order to reduce your stress, one of the easier ways is to go for a physical workout. If you are familiar with anger management, physical workout is usually emphasized because it is a great way to release stress. Keep a journal. It is ultra effective to write down your feelings and emotions on a piece of paper. Other than recording your emotions, it also allows you to vent your feelings on the paper. By tracking the patterns and trends of your emotions, you can then make the necessary adjustment in order to improve your emotions intelligence. Attend relevant courses. It is always worth investing in the relevant courses that can improve your emotions. Such courses are quite popular among working adults, and if it is important to you to improve your emotions intelligence, I think it is worth the investment. Feedback from your friends and family members. Getting feedback from your close friends or family members can be a good way to understand your emotions intelligence. You can check with them which areas that you need to improve on, regardless of your current state of emotions, intelligence. It should be borne in mind that it can be improved with the correct techniques and methods. Other steps for improving your emotional intelligence and communication. Emotional intelligence is the phrase used to describe the ability to identify, use, understand, and manage emotions in positive ways to relieve stress, communicate effectively, empathize with others, overcome challenges, and diffuse conflict. There are several competencies that are sometimes grouped into four major components. Self-awareness. You recognize your own emotions and how they affect your thoughts and behavior. Know your strengths and weaknesses. Have self-confidence. Self-management. You're able to control impulsive feelings and behaviors, manage your emotions in healthy ways, take initiative, follow through on commitments, and adapt to changing circumstances. Social awareness. You can understand the emotions, needs, and concerns of other people. Pick up on emotional cues, feel comfortable socially, and recognize the power dynamics in a group or organization. Relationship management. You know how to develop and maintain good relationships, communicate clearly, inspire and influence others, work well in a team, and manage conflict. It's likely we could all identify people we have known who seem to have a natural high EQ. These are people who resonate with us, create a positive vision, motivate us to work together to achieve great things. They communicate effectively. We like to be with them. They inspire trust. We could also identify some people who were just terrible at EQ, who constantly create dissonance and conflict, who inspire people to go to great lengths to avoid working with them. Are we predestined to live out our lives with the EQ we have today? The research says no. According to Richard Boyetzis, pioneering research into leadership and emotional intelligence, the research says that emotional intelligence and leadership skills can be taught. Drawing on intentional change theory, ICT, he describes the five steps to the type of personal change required in order to increase emotional intelligence. Intentional change theory holds that change. To be sustainable must be intentional. 
Interestingly, these steps are not dissimilar to steps required for organizational change. The requirement is a desire for change. Without that, no sustainable improvement is possible. People with no interest in developing EQ will not do so, but if they are motivated to change, the following steps will help them. 1. Identify the ideal self. In a way, this is analogous to imagining the future state of an organization, what it would look like without defects, rework, misalignment of work and requirements, etc. But the ideal self is much more personal. One person's ideal self building on his or her core identity and aspirations will be different from another's ideal self. Personal change starts with envisioning the ideal self, the way one would like to be, to work, and to be perceived. But this is much more personal. This has three elements, awareness of one's strengths, an image of the desired future, and a sense of hope that the desired future is attainable. Insight into the ideal self is not always straightforward. One might simply extrapolate a trend of the present instead of envisioning a truly desired future self. Talking about aspirations with trusted friends or mentors can help, but identifying a clear picture of the future self one wishes to be is a foundational step in intentional change theory. Two, identify the real self. Where is one relative to one's goals today? This step is not as easy as it sounds. In primal leadership, we found that an alarming number of leaders do not really know if they have resonance with their organizations. Rather, they suffer from CEO disease. Its one unpleasant symptom is the sufferer's near total ignorance about how his mood and actions appear to the organization. It's not the leaders don't care how they are perceived. Most do but they incorrectly assume that they can decipher this information themselves. Worse, they think that if they are having a negative effect, someone will tell them they're wrong. The greatest challenge is to see oneself as others do. Using multiple sources of feedback can be very useful. Many organizations use 360 reviews for all individuals in management positions. However, the self-assessments are customarily inflated because it is the start of negotiation position. Boyat sees uses 360 reviews to measure the correlation between EQ and operating results, but he says they throw away the self-assessments as they are largely delusional. Identification of the actual self requires honest and objective feedback. Behavioral feedback such as video and psychological tests can also help. 3. Develop a learning agenda. In contrast to the stream of to-dos and complying with agendas of others, the learning agenda is development-focused. In leadership development from a complexity perspective, Boyatzis says that a person often needs a type of permission to let go of old habits and try new ones. A learning agenda provides that type of structure for exploration and learning. 4. Experimentation and Practice the fourth step is to practice. Look for feedback and practice again. A consultant, coach, or mentor should help the individual who has embarked on intentional change to find safe settings to practice the characteristics of the effective leader he or she envisions. Five, helping relationships. Coaches, mentors, guides are very helpful to someone aiming to transition to the ideal self through practicing greater EQ and inspirational leadership. Improve your emotional intelligence today. It is measured by emotional intelligence quotient, EQ. In simpler terms, it means that a person with high emotional intelligence will have a natural ability to detect and decipher emotions in others' faces and voices. Be sensitive to even the slightest variations in mood and also harness their own emotions, negative or positive ones, to be managed to achieve intended goals. So why is EI important? According to Daniel Goleman, Harvard psychology PhD, New York Times science writer, EQ can make a greater difference in one's life compared to IQ. It is said that in the corporate world, IQ gets you hired, but EQ gets you promoted. Goleman likes to tell of a manager at AT&T's Bell Labs, a think tank for brilliant engineers in New Jersey who was asked to rank his top performers. They weren't the ones with the highest IQs. They were the ones whose email got answered. 
those workers who were good collaborators and networkers and popular with colleagues were more likely to get the cooperation they needed to reach their goals than the socially awkward lone wolf geniuses. People who possess high emotional intelligence are the people who truly succeed in work as well as play, building flourishing careers and lasting meaningful relationships. You are not your emotions. Steps to enhance your EI. Although no well-conducted published studies have been reported in regard to raising emotional intelligence to date, it is widely agreed that people can improve their emotional knowledge and improve their social functioning. Develop your emotional self-awareness. Whenever you feel an emotion you're not comfortable with, you can ask yourself, what is this feeling trying to tell me? You should also take time out to relax and be still observing thoughts and feelings as they come and go. This will give a degree of detachment as you realize you are more than whatever thoughts and emotions you are experiencing at the time. Another great way is to keep an emotional journal and take five minutes each morning to write down how you're feeling. By noting down the trend, you will gradually become more aware of your own emotions and better understand them. Remember, you are not your emotions. As humans, it is difficult for us to avoid feeling certain ways when things happen. Thus, it's how you respond to those feelings that matters. Whatever motion you're feeling, you still have a choice about how you act on it. And that's what counts. Judging yourself does not make you a better person. Instead, learn to stand up to failures. Resist the urge to scream out whoever is irritating you. Count to 10 slowly. Breathe slowly. Turn your mind to nature. Pray and ask God for a calm and humble heart and attitude. Philippians 4, 6, 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything. By prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In the end, this will enable us to develop patience and be still amidst difficult moments. Put yourself in the other person's shoes. Everyone sees the world in different ways, and everything that person does and says makes sense from their viewpoint. Even if it makes no sense to you, by learning to truly place yourself in the other person's situation, you will realize that often while the actions may seem wrong to you, their motivation behind the actions are good. It will allow us to understand them better and hence foster stronger and more meaningful relationships. Get some distance from the bad stuff. It has been researched and observed that humans spend the most of their time worrying about things. And among these things, most of them do not end up happening. While the small percentage that do take place was a lot less stressful or fearful than what we imagine, distance yourself. So one thing we should do is to avoid allowing ourselves to sink into self-pity or indulge in depressing thoughts. Often these are dangerous. The world does not revolve around ourselves, and when we find ourselves becoming increasingly self-centered and dejected, we should make an effort to pull out of it and think happy, cheerful, and more optimistic thoughts. This will give rise to more purposeful life, more friends, and better quality work. Chapter 3. Making the Distinction Between You and your feelings. When we feel down, melancholy, or sad, our immediate reaction is often to say, I am down, melancholy, sad, etc. Using the words I am implies that you are inherently down, melancholy, or sad as a person. By saying I am down, you are making no distinction between you and your feelings. You are a complex, worthwhile, deserving whole human being, no matter how you feel at any given moment. Your feelings are simply a part of that makeup, and recognizing this will help you understand how to improve your emotional intelligence. This distinction between you and your emotions is important because it gives you permission to feel without judging yourself negatively for having the feeling. For instance, if you feel inadequate because you feel you're not good enough at a particular sport for whatever reason, you can acknowledge the feeling by saying, I feel inadequate or I don't feel good enough. On the other hand, if you were to say, I'm not good enough, this goes some way towards closing the door on that activity, limiting the possibility of you improving. Acknowledging your limitations in the form of a feeling not only leaves open the possibility 
possibility of improvement later on, but also recognizes that you are a person who is inherently good enough, but who has a limitation they are working on. Using the word feel does not imply that you are in any way inadequate as a person. It simply acknowledges the emotions you're feeling in the moment and allows them to come to the surface. This is healthy, as suppressed emotions can cause complications on a physical and emotional level later on. The same can be said about negative thoughts. We all have self-deprecating we all have self-deprecating thoughts we're not proud of or that we feel we should not be having. However, we are human and all kinds of thoughts will come and go for a maraud of reasons. Again, avoid judging yourself negatively because you've had a particular thought. Unless that thought is about bringing harm to someone else, a negative thought about yourself and or your abilities does not make you a bad person. It is merely a thought in that moment, and it will go. So avoid saying, I am, whenever you acknowledge a negative thought or emotion. Acknowledge the feeling as a feeling, the thought as a thought. Recognize that you are an amazing human being who is just feeling a certain way or thinking a certain thought in the moment. Recognize that your thoughts and feelings don't determine who and what you are, that they are transient, and as such, given time, will go. How to improve your emotional intelligence. You may have heard the term emotional intelligence, EI or EQ, but what actually is it? What does it mean in practice? EI describes an ability or skill to perceive, assess, and manage the emotions of yourself and others. This includes interpersonal skills, the ability to build a rapport, motivate, influence, and get on well with others. And intrapersonal skills, the ability to know, understand, and motivate yourself and be self-aware. It is about knowing how you and others feel and what to do about it. Knowing what feels good and what feels bad and how to get from bad to good. Intelligence regarding the emotions, especially in the ability to monitor your own or others' emotions and to interact effectively with others. Research shows that what distinguishes successful business people from their less successful counterparts is not IQ, but EI. When people analyzed and defined the key skills and qualities needed to be a successful business leader, they found that the majority of these skills and qualities come within emotional rather than cognitive intelligences. So what action could you take today to improve your emotional intelligence? One, we all get caught up in the busyness of life. Take time each day to do in the here and now. Stop and see what is around you the colors, smells, feelings, and sounds. Be aware of how you feel and take time to be in the present. Two, think about how you can influence other people's behavior. Moods are catching and can have a domino effect. What action can you take to draw positive responses from others? Three, when you are faced with worry, consider the following questions. What is the evidence for the way you are feeling? What is the worst and best thing that could happen? How can you change the way you feel about the thing that is worrying you? Four, realize when you are stressed. The first step to reducing stress is recognizing what it feels like. Many of us spend so much time in an unbalanced state that we've forgotten what it feels like to be calm and relaxed. Once you have recognized your feelings of stress, you can then remember what it feels like to be relaxed and learn how to move to this state. Five, when you make decisions factor in your emotions, how much do they help or hinder you when you are making a decision? Six, choose your arguments wisely. Disputes take up time and energy, especially if you want to resolve them in a positive way. Consider what is worth arguing about and what is worth letting go. Seven, to be happy, take responsibility for your feelings. Remember that no one can make you feel inferior without your permission. Eight, keep a journal or diary and write in it daily. Keep a record of what you are grateful for and record your achievements. Nine, mediate for a few minutes each day. Go somewhere quiet, slow down your breathing and clear your mind to give yourself greater focus and relaxation. 10. Get feedback from others. What do they believe to be your strengths and limitations? Find out how you can build on areas that may be holding you back and further develop your skills and strengths. Did you know? Research suggests that emotional intelligence accounts for as much as 31% of management success. Competencies such as interpersonal skills, empathy, and your ability to influence others impacts hugely on your performance at work or how you run your business. 
As Brian Tracy said, you cannot control what happens to you, but you can control your attitude toward what happens to you. And in that, you will be mastering change rather than allow it to master you. Want to find out more? Take your own personal report for 30% off until 24 May 2016. Find out about your own emotional intelligence by taking our online Thomas International Questionnaire. This unique package will give you a personalized 20-page report and one-hour telephone coaching session with me to help you to develop your own emotional intelligence. Find out how you can manage stress more effectively, develop and maintain relationships, raise your levels of happiness, and be more assertive and confident. Chapter 4. How to Improve Your Emotional Intelligence Oh no, another type of intelligence? Oh yes. And ever more behavioral and brain-based studies are showing emotional intelligence could be more important the IQ to the success of your relationships, career, and general happiness. EQ is about understanding yourself, self-awareness, controlling your emotions, self-regulation, your self-motivation, how well you understand others, empathy, handling other people's emotions, social skills. Sometimes in life, we seem to struggle with ourselves and our relationships, so I like to give you a few tips on how you can work on your own EQ. 1. Accept your own feelings. Realize that you are doing the best you can at the time. Don't give yourself a hard time over how you feel. If you don't like how you feel, there are ways you can change it. 2. Listening to the message. Your emotions are there to help you. Ask yourself what your emotion is trying to tell you. Emotions are like someone knocking on the door. If you don't open it to find out what they want, they just knock louder. Take responsibility for the feeling. You can then change your attitude from why am I feeling this way to what do I need to do to change the way I feel. 3. Relax. Give yourself time to relax each day. Find somewhere quiet and comfortable. This could even be in your car. And close your eyes. Just start by noticing your breathing. You may want to start to slow your breathing. One way of doing this is breathing in through your nose for the count of 7 and out through your mouth for the count of 11. And just let your thoughts wander. 4. Be kind to your body. There are chemicals in our body that are responsible for keeping us happy and mentally stable. Having a healthy body promotes these chemicals and keeps them in balance. You should consider taking regular exercise that you enjoy, reducing your intake of sugar and caffeine, respecting your need for a good night's sleep. 5. Be positive and deal with negative self-talk. You don't have to believe every thought that comes into your own mind. Do you have an inner critic that puts a negative spin everything and everyone? Start to challenge those negative thoughts. Are they the truth? Being positive about yourself and your life activates the part of your brain that is happy, in control, and tells you the truth about situations. It also cuts out that unhelpful and damaging critical voice. 6. Go for what you really want. It is very difficult to motivate yourself towards a goal that someone else has chosen for you. Modern neuroscience shows us that just by focusing your mind on what you really want helps it happen. So ask yourself, what do you really value in life? What do you want more of? Where do you want to live? What are you passionate about? What sort of person do you want to be? 7. Pay attention to people's nonverbal clues. We all have a subconscious ability to understand how someone is feeling. However, paying more conscious attention can help you to improve this skill. A few interesting ones to get you started include notice how quickly someone is breathing. Which way are their feet pointing? At you or at the door? Are they covering their bodies with their arms, legs, indicating defensiveness, lack of confidence, etc.? How fast, loud are they talking? 8. Notice your own emotional responses. How can get a feeling from someone? Listen to this feeling. What is it telling you about them or how they are feeling? 9. Allow other people to have their own emotions. Moving on from point 1. Other people have a right to feel however they do. Don't judge or try to change their emotions. Recognizing that everyone is doing the best they can at that moment helps you to create good relationships. 10. Create rapport. This means being on the same wavelength as someone, and you can help this process along by getting in sync with the person. The simple way of doing this is thinking this person has motor driving them. That what speed is it running at? Match the speed with your 
talking and body movements at a very subconscious level. This allows the other person to relax as they recognize that you get them. These are just a few of the things you can do to work on the different aspects of your emotional intelligence. Pick one point a day and just take a few moments to remember and notice it. It can be good fun and very effective too. If you'd like to find out more about EQ, there is a book called Emotional Intelligence by Daniel Goleman that I would recommend as a very interesting read. If you are struggling with aspects of the above, do come and see me at my hypnotherapy practice in Plymouth. I use solution-focused hypnotherapy, a superb tool that improves levels of happiness and success and helps people getting back on track with their social relationships. Chapter 5, Self-Awareness. The foundation of emotional intelligence is to know thyself, to understand your own strengths and challenges, and be able to change your behaviors and attitudes to enhance your communication and relationships. What we are unaware of, we cannot change. Think about a time when your emotions were out of control. What happened physiologically? Was your heart racing? Was your mind babbling? Or were you oblivious to the people around you? How do others react to you? Have you noticed when you communicate in a certain way that others respond or that they don't seem to connect with what you are saying? Now is the time to do a reality check. How do certain situations feel? Are you frustrated, impatient, or calm? Also, watch the reactions of others. How do they respond, act, and reply to your behaviors and attitudes? Remember, this is their perception of you and may be different to how you think you are presenting yourself. Bring awareness to your behaviors, attitudes, and communication. What you say, do, don't say, your body language, and the way you interact with others all sends powerful messages to others. Implement small changes to your behaviors and observe what works and what isn't effective. Ask someone you trust for their perceptions. Improving your emotional intelligence may be as easy as getting more sleep. Have you ever wondered how hard you should be working at solving a challenging problem in your life? May I dare say that this is a common human experience for nearly everyone on this planet at one time or another. We are constantly aware of a need to solve problems if and when they arise with our careers and jobs, our relationships with others, or our physical health ills. No matter what the challenge may be, that little extra edge advantage may just lie in something that a lot of people seem to take for granted nowadays. Recent sleep research suggests something as simple as getting enough quality and consistent sleep may just be one one of the many different things we can use to help solve problems that we may not even be aware we have sometimes. But how will more sleep help us find more problem-solving answers? Sleep investigators have discovered that despite our apparent lack of physical inactivity and mental alertness, our brain remains rather active during sleep. Our brain seems to need and use this downtime to mainly allow itself the rest it needs to be able to fully process recent pieces of new information that it took in during our latest wake cycle. Sleeping helps us to strengthen our newly formed memories by copying, filing, and saving only the new pieces of information that will eventually become the most pertinent at solving our current dilemmas. The brain also needs time to temporarily shut down by blocking out the constant influx of incoming stimuli. This helps make our most recently formed memories easier to recall when we want and makes them more resistant to long-term interference by the flood of all other information that the brain will take in during its next and subsequent conscious alert phases. If you find this news about sleep rather intriguing, then consider that up until the mid 1950s 1950s, most researchers who were studying this field of interest thought that the brain remained largely inactive while we slept. By 1994, our understanding of brain activity underwent a complete reversal in this way of thinking. In an eye-opening Israeli sleep study conducted by neurobiologist Avi Carney, of Sagi and colleagues at the Wiseman Institute of Science, it was concluded that there was definitely better memory recall of objects that test subjects saw the day before. This increased performance was attributed to adequate amounts of REM sleep. When test subjects were deprived of adequate amounts of REM sleep, memory recall performance declined. This type of experiment was revisited again in 2000. It became clear that sleep could actually be a necessity for increased memory performance to occur. It was observed that it took at least six hours or more to help increase performance over a 24-hour period. But 
it was also discovered that all phases of sleep, not just REM sleep, were equally just as important. By 2006, sleep was shown to have more than a short-term performance boost on memory recall. Sleep appears to embed the memory enough to make it more resilient to interference from new information we take in the next day. It has become apparent also that sleep provides more than just a stabilizing or preserving effect on our newly formed memories. Sleep seems to strengthen the emotional component we attach to this new information. After a few more sleeping sessions, the brain calls out even more meaningless information and leaves mainly the emotional aspects about the memory intact. Therefore, sleep seems to play a pivotal role in our emotional memory involvement as well. How sleep acts as a biological screening mechanism in discarding the meaningless or keeping only the pieces of information that we find relevant enough to form an emotional association with in helping us to solve many of our problems is not yet clearly understood. Whether the sleeping process is always a beneficial intelligence boost to everyone remains a debatable topic. In certain circumstances like unipolar and bipolar disorder type depressions, how much sleep is considered to be overkill and and possibly hindering one's problem-solving abilities. A puzzler for sure, but the answers may not stay hidden forever. Theoretically, it is understood that thoughts forming memories are created along literally thousands of different neural synaptic paths. Once these neurons have fired together for the first time in communication between one another, a pattern has been created and locked in place, making it more likely to recur. This is what makes it easier to recall a thought pattern or memory at will. This phenomenon has been termed long-term potentiation. The purpose of sleep seems to allow the brain's ability to reactivate this new pattern after creating it while we were awake. During sleep, the brain rehearses the more difficult parts of a task by using the same original neural path it used to create the memory. Plus, it uses different areas of the brain to strengthen certain aspects of the task that need it the most. Amazingly, the sleeping brain does this without our awareness. And even if we think we really do not have a major problem to solve, is it nice to know that when we do a good way to help us work through something we consider difficult, all we have to do is take care of our brain first by letting it rest? Obviously, getting in enough quality sleep time is a continual drain on a modern day society. Some individuals seem to go out of their way to disrupt their natural sleep wake rhythm cycle nature really did intend for the brain to take in all of its new information during the light of day and process it all during the darkness this seems to be how humans evolved in gaining the superior intelligence they enjoy today in the 21st century this natural biological rhythm evolution was a manifestation that came from only a simple need to survive hunt and gather food by day, sleep and rest at night. In a culture of people who seem to place a high value on intelligence, creativeness, individuality, and excellence, you would think some of us would learn how to use our time a little more wisely. Maybe giving yourself the gift of greatness is in little more than just sleeping on it, being on it. Enhance your emotional intelligence in three easy steps. We are all born with emotions. We just have different ways of coping with them. The best way, of course, is to deal with them properly by knowing the right time and the right place for everything. By learning how to enhance your emotional intelligence, you are one step closer to becoming an emotionally smart person. Emotional intelligence is easy to attain. Once you read this article, you will soon find that out for yourself. So how do you enhance your emotional intelligence? Here are a few ideas that might help you out. Step one, be observant. People won't always tell you when they're upset or when they're frustrated. You have to learn how to read their emotions all on your own. Start by observing how other people react and relate to different things. How do they react upon hearing good news and bad news? A slight twitch of the lips can have different meanings. An arc of an eyebrow also has its own connotation. By observing people's quirks and circumstances, you'll be able to deduce their respective emotions quite easily. Step two, reach out. One great way to enhance your emotional intelligence is by reaching out. You have an easier time understanding what it is that made that person feel a certain way. If you find your friend crying in a corner, go to her and ask what her problem is. As her story unfolds, you'll be able to grasp the context of her tears. Or if your friend is a guy, at least try to help him in any way that you can. In the future, you'll be able to look back on these incidents and know what to expect should a similar situation occur. Step three, 
Calm yourself down. Sometimes we become too overloaded with emotions. I'm not just talking about our own personal emotions here, but that of others as well. If you want to enhance your emotional intelligence, you must also learn how to calm yourself down. Try to de-stress in the way that soothes you the best. Does it include meditation or getting a massage? Think of these wonderfully relaxing treatments and get your own emotions in order. These are just some of the ways by which you can enhance your emotional intelligence. The more you practice them, the better you'll be at handling everybody's emotions and yourselves as well. There is no room for rash behavior here only sensitivity and strength of spirit. Chapter 6. Training Your Emotional Intelligence Using an analogy to the way a human learns to ride a bike, play an instrument, or to perform any other activity that is based on synchronization of the body and brain, there is a way to train and learn how to mold your emotional intelligence. Through practice, one can learn to handle one's emotions, but also to manage the others too. Some have an innate capacity of emotional self-management and of other people's emotions. However, the level of natural emotional intelligence talent is low. So that this is clear, training and building personal emotional intelligence are possible, but there are limits to it too. Don't expect to never suffer and have problems. It's like in tennis. One can practice quite often, but might nevertheless never reach another person's high level of performance. It is about specific characters too. The more you practice, the better you get at it. Many people choose to be oblivious and uninterested in the others as an alternative to learn how to manage emotions. This can be an option too but it is not that satisfactory. Hence, improving one's personal intelligence is quite important and one has to make a commitment to put the best into it in order to gain satisfaction. This starts with taking the time to strive towards becoming more aware of personal feelings and emotions and get in control of them. You can take approximately half an hour three to four times a week for this activity. Willingness and motivation are the major propellers that push an individual forward in the attempt to improve his emotional intelligence. Some succeed in doing that easier, but some have to undergo a struggle. This is why these two important features have to accompany the contestant all the way out. Not everybody can be an ace in all areas, but trying is a part of the key to success. Build your emotional intelligence. How savvy are you regarding your emotional intelligence? The primary role of a leader is to create emotional wealth for competitors competitive advantage. When the tools of emotional intelligence are in the hands of leaders, the tools open the doors to the remarkable creative entrepreneurial energy that exists in all genuine leaders. Leadership is central to unleashing the best performance. Jim Collins' book, Good to Great, cites three elements. Leadership is critical, the right people, values, a set of values which people are corporate about, the values that define corporate success. Current evidence suggests that organizations perceive the key sustainable competitive advantage is intricately involved with the ability to attract and retain talent. The talent war and adaption required to compete in a rapidly changing environment require leaders to have effective emotional intelligence. A leader's intelligence has to have a strong emotional component. He has to have high levels of self-awareness, maturity, and self-control. She must be able to withstand the heat, handle setbacks, and when those lucky moments arise, enjoy success and equal parts of joy and humility. No doubt emotional intelligence is more rare than book smarts, but my my experience says it is actually more important in the making of a leader. You just can't ignore it. The emotional intelligence of many leaders could be improved. There is a growing realization that the major issue facing many organizations is that of managing transformations and change. Increasingly, organizations are facing the reality that the future is not one of incremental improvement and adjustment, but rather a radical transformation and reinvention of business. Effective business transformation requires consistency skills, ability, and personal commitment. Effective leadership engages people at an emotional level as well as focus on performance, as well as focusing on the hard benefits such as organizational purpose, form, better financial performance, and improved performance compared to other competitors. It is equally important to focus on the self-awareness, relationship skills, self-resilience, self-control, self-confidence, and optimism.
Leaders who are demonstrating high levels of emotional intelligence will not only be more self-actualized, but will attract more profits to the business and organizations to which they belong. Self-awareness lies at the core of emotional intelligence, and no truly effective leader operates without self-awareness. This concept was highlighted by the Harvard Business Review in an article entitled Breakthrough Ideas for Tomorrow's Business Agenda. The article stated, executives who fail to develop self-awareness risk falling into an emotionally deadening routine that threatens their true selves. Indeed, a reluctance to explore your inner landscape not only weakens your own motivation, but can also corrode your ability to inspire others. Martin Newman, in his book, Emotional Capitalist, the new leaders refers to today's top executives as emotional capitalists. Emotional capitalists score high on self-reliance, a certainness and optimism. In other words, high-performing leaders are self-directed. They take responsibility for themselves, possess an independence of mind in managing their thoughts and values. High-performing leaders are able to express their thoughts and feelings in a non-aggressive way, are open to sensing opportunities, possess the ability to maintain a positive approach and remain persistent even in the face of major challenges. Exercises to improve your emotional intelligence. Have you ever felt out of touch with your own emotions? Do you wish you could empathize more with the way others feel? Try these six exercises to improve your emotional intelligence and become an emotional Einstein. Take an emotional inventory. During a typical day, you probably feel dozens of emotions, and these emotions influence your actions. It is easy to go about your business without examining why you do the things you do. But for one day, attempt to track your feelings. When you notice you are conducting an activity on autopilot, take a moment to analyze your thoughts and the way you feel and write them down in a journal. When you develop an ability to identify the emotional motivation behind your actions, you will grow a much better understanding of yourself and the ways you feel. Express yourself. Knowing how you feel is one thing. Being able to express how you feel to others is another. Once you can identify your own emotions accurately, it is just as important to be able to convey them to others in an appropriate manner. And the only way to become better at expressing your emotions is to do it. The next time you are feeling scared, sad, excited, or another of the thousands of emotions under the sun, call a friend or relative who you feel has a high EQ. Tell them the situation you are experiencing, that your emotions stem from. Ask them to identify what emotions they think you are feeling and see if they match up with your own identifications. If you find yourselves in conflict, discuss ways that you could have conveyed your emotional state more clearly. Learn to manage your negative emotions. Stress, depression, and anxiety are just a few of the negative emotions you may experience over the course of a day or week. Becoming more emotionally intelligent requires an ability to manage your negative emotions. After you have learned to identify your feelings, you must attempt to mitigate the negative ones when they occur. Different strategies work for different people, but you may find it helpful to create a list, either mental or written down, of solutions that work for you when your emotions are not working in your favor. Refer to your list when you are experiencing harmful emotions and counteract them with one of your personal strategies. Take a lesson in listening. There's an old saying, God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. Listen twice as much as you speak. In the recipe for improving your emotional intelligence, listening is a key ingredient. The next time a friend comes to you with a problem, make a conscious effort to truly listen to what he is saying. Allow him to fully express himself before jumping in with your opinions. Listening intently before speaking will allow you to perceive his emotions in the most accurate manner possible before coloring your advice with your own predispositions. Study nonverbal emotional cues. Oftentimes, people get their points across without saying a word in understanding and empathizing with the emotions of others. It is important to accurately evaluate their nonverbal cues. To practice this, try watching part of a movie or television show with the volume turned down. See if you are able to tell what emotions the actors are portraying by their facial expressions and body language. Try personality mirroring. If you've ever watched The Office, you know of characters' humorous exploits in personality mirroring, even if you haven't seen the show. However, you can take in a more serious way, of course. Personality mirroring is a good way to read the emotions others are displaying and reflect these same emotions back to them through your actions. If you are able to effectively mirror others' personalities in the right situations, this technique can help you to increase rapport with professional contacts and build relationships with casual friends.
While exploring your own emotions and those of others can be intimidating, difficult, and sometimes confounding, it can also be rewarding. If you are willing to take time to hone your emotional intelligence, you never know where it may lead you. How to explore your emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence might be described as the ability to control all your emotions and implicitly to exploit wisely your emotional reactions, also known as EQ. This type of intelligence concerns your social life because the challenge comes when you are exposed to social factors. Our ability to manage emotions is not necessarily an innate skill. It can be developed and learned so that you will cope successfully with social challenges. Exploring your emotional intelligence means matching or connecting two different dimensions of self. The inner side encompasses your personal beliefs and set of values, personal long-term goals, whereas the second dimension concerns the other world, more precisely others, emotions, goals, and standards. The way we weigh connections the way we make connections shows our ability to deal with a wide array of challenges, and it might reveal our capacity to readjust our behavior to different inner and external stimuli. Emotional intelligence is about equilibrium between inner life and social life. We could benefit from our EQ as long as our motivation governing our goals interferes with both plans. A counterbalance between personal and social dimensions brings us closer to the maximum advantage of EQ. We can easily notice that a personal factor has its social correspondent. Therefore, each time we should interrelate socially, we are required to readjust our outcomes to others' values. Strategies regarding our emotional intelligence are extremely useful in job-related domains or educational realms. Therefore, neurolinguistic programming has developed special techniques that are truly helpful for individuals who are willing to improve their social experiences. EQ-driven techniques enable individuals to improve the level of communication and to expand the way they approach difficult issues. Leadership strategies are based upon the idea that EQ can go beyond average communication, means, and might manipulate astutely any audience's perceptions. Leadership is a strategy that involves mainly motivation techniques. In addition to making people trust your assertions, you need to make them adopt a particular behavior. Exploring our emotional intelligence means developing a particular behavior within a particular context, yet the stress still falls on human factor because the fundamental purpose of our emotional intelligence relies on others' reactions and feedbacks. Usually, feedbacks stand for a relevant reflection of our emotional intelligence level. Conclusion. Thank you again for downloading this book. I hope this book was able to help you understand emotional intelligence. Finally, if you enjoyed this book, then I'd like to ask you for a favor. Would you be kind enough to leave a review for this book? I'd be greatly appreciated. Thank you and good luck. This has been Emotional Intelligence, a guide to understanding, developing, and improving your emotional intelligence. Why it is more important than IQ and how to use it in your life spectrum, from everyday life to business and leadership. Written by Adam Brown. Read by Matt Montanez.